So my name is Macy and I recently just moved down here from upstate New York. Kind of the same place as her. Like, Are you guys friends? Uh, yeah, I mean, we just met a couple of days ago, so... Wait, yeah. you mean in Miami? Yeah. Weird, right? Through me. How'd you guys meet? <laughs> Through her. <laughs> just walking the street. Hey, I'm your friend no, now? No, I came yeah. down here with her. Uh -huh. I know her from back home, and I knew that we were going to be close, so I hit her up. So, so we yeah, together. we went on a boat yesterday, and we met yesterday. You met on a boat? Yeah, yeah. 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 We had a private yeah. chef. Hey, man, you've been on a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> you got back. Okay. Cool. So, you guys are friends now, I guess. And then... Yeah, definitely. Dating status? Uh, it's like super single. I'm not sure the that. Wait, hold on. Can we, can we go through oh, that recap. one more time? Because so, I was... Yeah. Because uh, first, don't take notes. So, I, I got to do it. Uh, what, what's your name again? My name is Macy. 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 I'm 22. Like, 22. Uh -huh. Where are you from? I'm from upstate New York. A super small town called Fort Plain. Okay. Yeah, you probably never heard of it. And then, uh, highest education level completed? Uh, I have my bachelor's in business. Okay. From where? University of Albany. Okay. Mm hmm And right now I'm a bottle girl and I kind of resell things like, you know, like sneaker drops, you know, shit like that. Okay. You but I'm getting my real estate upstate? license. I just moved down here a few months ago. Okay. And uh, what's your relationship status? You said single, right? Yeah. Single. Okay. No, and then, you're single. Who, you said something about a boat. You met somebody on a boat. Her? Or no, me. Not her. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you yeah. guys just happen to both be from New York. Yes. yes. Okay. Like the same spot. Damn cool. there. I'll tell you this, man. Magic happens on boats. <laughs> Quink, quink. Yeah. It's really Miami. Uh, yeah, Miami. And you guys said there was like a private chef and all this other stuff? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, did y'all pay for the boat? No. 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 Of course not. <laughs> of course not. It's Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's free in Miami if you look good. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Oh, Life is on easy mode for girls, man. Yep. Holy. It is. Juicy! Now at 11, a social media model is accused of killing two people in a violent car crash. Police say she was speeding before slamming right into two cars in downtown Miami. Tonight, she's behind bars after a judge called her a danger to the community. Good evening, I'm Elliot Rodriguez. And I'm Lauren Pastrana. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero is at the jail with the shocking confession she made to police. Macy Marie Lathers is being held on a $140,000 bond. Police say she was speeding down North Miami Avenue in downtown Miami when she hit two cars. Investigators on the scene say she confessed to being high on the party drug known as pink cocaine. And if it wasn't for the citizens or witnesses nearby who stopped her, she would have completely fled. Social media model Macy Lathers, also known by Macy Marie on Instagram, is facing multiple felony charges. They include multiple counts of leaving the scene of a crash causing death and driving without a license causing serious bodily harm. The crash happened last Saturday morning before 7. Police say Lathers was speeding at an alarming rate, slamming into not one but two cars. Two men were killed. Witnesses pointed north to where Lathers allegedly began running away from the scene. They asked her questions. She advised she was under the influence of 2C, a known party drug, and that she was from the future and had a crystal ball. Lathers wasn't even supposed to be driving. Back in January, her license was suspended indefinitely. No drive order. You see? You are not allowed to drive a motor vehicle while this case is pending. Do you understand, ma'am? Okay. Her Instagram account shows she has 11,000 followers and graduated with honors, but now she'll remain in a jail cell until she can post her $140,000 bond. Because I believe an increased bond is warranted. She's an absolute danger to the community based on killing two people or driving when she shouldn't have been in a car. And she's clearly impaired based on her statements. Lathers could face additional charges for DUI manslaughter. The prosecutor did say in court that they are waiting on her toxicology results. In West Miami-Dade, Nakaya Guerrero, CBS News, Miami. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Nerd Chronicles with your host, the socially awkward nerd Christian Paul speaking. And ladies and gentlemen, we have like another dose of hardcore Juicy Ratchetivity Juicy. coming out of the pseudo alpha guru Manosphere Streets. This time it involves a model that appeared as a guest from the Fresh and Fit podcast, and it's not so great positive news. In fact, it's actually some very tragic news in regards to that. 
one of the IG models that was a guest on Fresh and Fit has been charged with vehicle, vehicle of high homicide as well as vehicle of manslaughter after literally driving her Mercedes, um, Mercedes sedan. I believe it's a CLA sedan, if I'm not mistaken, literally right into two cars at the middle of the intersection, killing two off of one SUV and injuring like the Range Rover that came by. Um, two people have tragically been, two, two lives have unfortunately tragically been taken and she has mainly been charged. And not only that, what makes it worse, the model was literally driving high, literally off the pink Sugar or Tusi, as you will. And let Tusi. me repeat myself again. Pink Sugar. S U G A H. Juicy. And before I go any further in regards to this situation, my deepest, deepest condolences to all the families that have their family members' life mainly being taken away senselessly due to senseless accidents. Um, deep condolences to those, um, to the family members of those victims during that horrific census act. Um, in regards to that, um, it's definitely a sin and a shame. I cannot imagine the trauma and everything else that me and you guys are literally feeling right now. All we could do is definitely pray that you'll be able to actually get through this very smoothly, as quickly as possible in regards to that. You know, that type, that type of boom, that type of hole will never, ever, ever fully be complete, completely filled in regards to that. So I do want to give my deepest condolences to that. So, when it comes to all the chaos and everything else, we are definitely going to go do a quick overview of the charges. You know, that that little IG model came by, um, Macy Marie. That's basically her name. We're going to actually see what is he, she, she's been accused of given the situation when it comes with um, DUI, if you, know, if you know what I mean. Uh, we'll dig into those statements. Um, we'll dig into her situation. And mind you, this is a woman who has a bachelor's degree um, with honors, I believe. I don't know if it's summa cum laude or anything like that. But she did receive her bachelor's degree in business at the University at Albany, where she hails from upstate New York. So, we're going to actually dig with all of these things first off in regards to her situation individually. And I also want to discuss about the situation on how much of these pseudo alpha gurus are going to mainly spin it and actually generalize the situation with Macy and try to generalize it with every single woman that's up on the face of the earth thinking that, you know, when women are left to their own devices, you know, they'll do some crazy stuff like this. This is the rhetoric that they're mainly going to try to pull. And I'll actually be discussing this in much, much further detail on the trip back lanes that they mainly use later on up in this view to mainly fuel their own narratives and all the other things that actually mainly come about. Again, we are focusing on that particular individual here, not a group. So, buckle up. Enjoy the ride, ladies and gentlemen, because it is about to literally get extremely juicy. Juicy! So, ladies and gentlemen, we have this article here that basically tells you about the story of Macy Marie that basically blames, you know, party drugs and time travel for the crash that killed two in Miami. And what I mean by party drugs, the pink. Sugar, aka 2C, okay, and you talking about fucking Tron travel, like you, you, you blame all this stuff, but yet, yeah, yeah it's Lily chose to take those drugs, and not only that, yeah, it's Lily chose to be behind the fucking wheel of the car, are you serious, are you fucking serious, you know what I'm saying, and you know, we know she was driving on um, Macy here, was driving the CLA, um, basically drove her through the red light while she was literally high, okay? And not only that, ladies and gentlemen, she was driving with a suspended license, okay? Her license was suspended in the state of Florida, okay? Ever since she moved in 2022, I don't know when her license was suspended. We don't know for sure. We don't know what's the cause of that. And we don't know if it was suspended up in New York State for I know. But yet, She's still able to drive. We don't know how long her suspension is lasting. That's what makes the whole situation worse. Okay? And now she pulls some reckless shits like this. And now two people are gone. Senselessly. For what? For fucking 
talking what? You know? You were like, one of the people that tragedy was killed was the father. Um, the father, Abraham Ismael. Um, see, he was the one that was driving a Suzuki sedan. One of the cars that was hit. And the rear, um, basically there was a rear passenger up in that Suzuki sedan. There were three people up in that car. Um, Abraham, his wife, as well as a rear passenger. The moment that Macy's car has hit instantly, you know, both the two cars, the Suzuki as well as the Range Rover. Um, fortunately, um, there was a very young driver that drove the Range Rover. He barely was affected. All he had was some minor injuries, thank God. But the Suzuki was dealt with the most damage. And two lives have been taken from this senselessly as a result of that. Um, Abraham, as well as the rear passenger. Fortunately, by the grace of God, the wife survived, but she, as of now, is in critical condition in which she is unable to work due to her injuries that she suffered from that crash based on that on recklessness by Macy here. And what's worse, she was really trying to run away from the scene. Okay? So if we're able to actually scroll down and see what's actually mainly going on, and I'm not going to actually repeat all the stuff that's actually there um, due to the fact that there's actually the news article that has been presented earlier in this video that shows this. To see. To see as in cat. Alright? I just want to try and let you know. And it's basically being um, oversaw, or basically overran by Judge Mindy Blazer that's over here in this case. So y'all, this is some... Oh man, that teenage boy is going to be feeling this for a very, very long time, man. He's going to be traumatically scarred for life. My goodness, man. My goodness. Ridiculous, man. And for what? You, you can't, you out here driving high? And this is the consequence of when you fuck, when you fucking literally drive recklessly. Well, you have all these mistakes that you've done. And mind you. She has a bachelor's degree, okay, with honors, coming from the University of Albany, which she could actually utilize that degree and actually try to actually work from the bottom up and actually understood business literally from behind the scenes and literally find a way to actually literally figure out how to triple that money and expand some of the business somehow or even actually try to form own company or even utilize the marketing skill that she learned from business just to elevate her brand. And all that stuff is mainly taken away now due to a dumbass decision that he made, she mainly made. You know, it, it, it's just sickening, it's disgusting, it's reprehensible. Y'all, as I scroll through all of this, and I know they have a GoFundMe which they're going to go by separately up in this clip. You know, it's just literally insane. So, we know, and we now know, that Macy's license has been suspended since January this year. So, it has been suspended for around seven months now so i don't know how long the suspense is supposed to last for but yes her license has been suspended since january and she was stopped by by sentence while attempting to flee the moment that she dealt with the crash fucking disgusting y'all fucking reprehensible man look at this shit oh my god what a loser straight up loser and you wonder why she got the $140,000 bond. And you wonder why Judge Glazer, Glazer, the Honorable Judge Glazer, placed her ass up in house arrest where she's at now. Had she placed that bond, either she would have been house arrest or she would have been stayed up in county jail somewhere until the trial concludes. And based on what's been mainly going on up here, more than likely, she will be serving a lot of years in prison. She's literally facing decades in prison, given accounts that we're looking at right now. All felonies, four counts of driving without a license was on in death for serious injury, and four counts of leaving the scene of crash was on in death for serious injuries, all in the state of Florida, mind you. All felonies, okay? She is screwed. Her future opportunities are mainly screwed at that point based on the recklessness that she has done did, okay? And I want to make this very, 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 very clear to ladies and gentlemen that are actually watching this video literally right now okay this is not a fucking gender war situation let me make this very clear 
this is an individualistic decision making because it's not just women that do all these things because you're hearing all these things from these pseudo red pill gurus that are mainly saying when women are left to their own devices they'll do chaotic stuff like this no some women would but not all and it's not just limited to those women that made those decisions there are men that made those same decisions and even worse and some women that made worse decisions than what she has and they are serving like a harsh amount of time based on what they done did i've, I've witnessed some men i've seen news clips of men getting caught up in duis dwis and have killed numerous people okay have been involved in death by auto situations where they served a handful of years or at times decades up in state prison and their lives weren't fully the same again you know what i'm saying must the opportunities to rebuild or much harder even though the initial opportunity the easy opportunities are gone you know that type of stuff right there is literally some real ass shit okay this is literally no fucking joke ladies and gentlemen none you know please take a moment as you literally learn from Mason's mistakes and you have to be very very weary and very careful of what you do once you're up in that will or once you actually try to live the pie life just I'm not saying have fun and anything else but if you do these types of things make sure you do all these things responsibly and be smart when doing it you know what I'm saying if you're not gonna be able to drive due to all this impairment stuff don't go get an uber got so much opportunity to allow these cars and make it much easier for people going to place to place now if you feel the tax is gonna be overwhelming for you you know what I'm saying so many opportunities now why would you actually why would somebody of Macy's caliber if she's really attractive on her situation you know make the choice that she do what she did you know what I'm saying and we are going to literally get right into the nitty gritty of this whole ordeal real soon when it comes to the pink sugar. Juicy! Alright, now, um, now that I got myself the calm in this whole situation here, um, basically one of the victims, um, the family members of one of those victims that have um, Paris in this census accident here, um, she has basically uh, formed a GoFundMe to actually help her um, with rehabilitation and support as well as funeral expenses uh, when it comes to being a now, um, now formed widow. Um, very, very tragic, very unfortunate situation. Uh, once again, deep condolences um, in regards, you know, um, to um, deep condolences to Stephanie in regards to Abraham as well as the other passenger up in that car. Um, if you would like to actually donate to uh, this young lady's GoFundMe, um, you can definitely do so with the site that's there. They have the link that's mainly up there below. If you're able to do so, I could definitely provide that in the description below. Also, if you'd like to do so, also to actually help this young lady out, this young widow out that literally lost two people instantly and is literally going through some very, very deep traumatic shock right now. So any type of blessing, if you choose to, would definitely be helpful. On their families, really on their family stand as well as we're passing families. All right. Now let's actually dig into the definition of what pink sugar really is. Juicy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have finally got into the whole definition of what pink sugar is, aka pink cocaine. Now this, let me try to actually deal with this whole pop-up here. Pardon me ladies and gentlemen here, because I know I was doing all these pop-ups and everything else. So, it's mainly reviewed by Dr. Jadine Begum and written by Carrie Whittington. Definitely give a shout, I want to give a shout out to those two um, people and those two experts that are mainly involved when it comes to the WebMD situation. So, Pink Sugar is the new designer drug which is the powdery mix of ketamine and the little substances likely died with food coloring. All you miss with coloring, if you actually get too hooked on that, all that crazy disease just to get you hooked on that profit. Sometimes has a sweet smell like strawberries. And the drug, originally came from Colombia, has grown in popularity in the United States, other regions around the world, and which, you know, pink sugar hasn't been around very long so a lot of researchers have no idea about the long-term effects it may have on people who use it and we have another name for it two 
C. C. Feel me? Now, is pink sugar actually sugar? Nine top. In the world, sweet drugs aren't really regulated by the United States government, so there's no way to know exactly what is in pink sugar. But it's not just color for sugar. It may not have any sugar at all. Now, that mix of ketamine could be a combination of MDMA, money, 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 ecstasy, methamphetamine, sugar, cocoa, cocaine, cocaine, opioids, opium, and new psychoactive substances. And what's MPS is new synthetic drugs. Now it could contain caffeine, benzo, diazepines, benzos, bath salts, mescaline, LSD, other hallucinogens. Now the feeling of it, you know, deal with the types of drugs is up in pink sugar. How much you take, your drug intolerance, how you buy reaction drugs, what you use, you know, the liquor or other substances at the same time. Now the high can feel strong within one to three hours, but the effects can linger for about four to eight hours, basically like a third of the whole day. All right. You know, it could boost the heart rate, make you feel excited or happy, make you feel more sensitive. Um, if I'm actually cooking this stuff up, it's really popping up with all this weight stuff. So, ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me on that. Um, you know, side effects, strange thoughts, confusion, seeing and hearing things ain't there, hallucinations, feeling sick to your stomach, you know, stomach ulcers, you know, stomach pain, big guts, agitation, anxiety, depression, high blood pressure, breathing changes, slow body temperature, seizures. You know what I'm saying? Fainting, long-term effects, sleep personality changes, memory problems. You know, we talked about depression anxiety earlier. Having total pain and attention, having ADD, developing that, you know, who knows? Has a lot of risks that mainly comes about. It's basically made in unregulated labs. You don't really know how much stuff you're taking it, you know. Always drug check. You know, when you talk about pink clean, having a multiple source substance, you know, certain tests may have you feeling a little bit more careful always have somebody with you to actually call you for medical help whenever you need it. if you lose yourself take a load of those don't mix substances if it gets too crazy call 911 when you deal with these types of symptoms have trouble staying awake too sleepy passing out seizure agitation lasts on in 15 minutes chest pain total breathing for longer than 15 minutes and we know the pink sugar is very addictive and what's treatment requires medical detox behavioral therapy, medication, group therapy, peer support groups, as well as treatment. This is that juicy shit, ladies and gentlemen. Juicy! Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to discuss much of these pseudo-alpha gurus, you know, twisted rhetoric on how they would utilize a story like this in order to twist it to try to fade their own narrative, i.e., you know, when a woman is left to her own devices, you know, they would mainly say that she tends to be self-destructive. So they claim. I go on a date with a girl and she says, hey, I want to go to Poppy Steak and I want to do XYZ after. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever you want. And I go on a date with her to Poppy Steak. I hit her back up the next day. She never responds. I go on TikTok and cry about it. Would you feel sorry for me? I yeah. would feel sorry yeah. for you, but damn, why the video on TikTok? I'm an idiot. It's my fault. <laughs> I got to take some kind of responsibility for my bad decisions, right? Yeah. Well, same thing with you women. You pick the wrong guys. And you say, he's that sick. Just like me, if I get finessed by a girl, I deserve to be made fun of. And I think we need to go back to making fun of women when they pick toxic people. Left to own devices. See, when you got heterosexual males who love women on their left or own devices, the result is because they love women, you're going to see personal development, working out, training, reading books on how to be better. This is a bunch of friends and research that shows that personal development for men is all about self-improvement. Now, when you got the females who are left to their own devices, these females are heterosexual also, when they're left with devices, what we're seeing now is that there's a lot more entitlement, they get weight, they even have babies by a strange man, and then they want the men who have been working on themselves to take care of them and fix up the mistakes that they made. It's a very unfair scale, and because the men say, hey, you know what, that's not really what I thought. I was busy working myself, and the female starts to throw rocks. 
insults. How dare you not? Instead of working on themselves. So it's an unfair system. That's why men gotta work. Uh, Truckin' uh, truck Reviews is in here. Good to see you in here. Uh, King Life says they should have never gave these 304s money. Ay, 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 ay. Guys, I say it all the time. I say this all... I, guys, I've, I, guys, I've been saying this for years. Women don't need... Women need to be protected from a lot of things, right? Our society, the United States, we've done such a, we've done such a good job. Men have done such a good job. Civil, see, men civilize the world so that women can exist in it. And so when you have women, you know, who don't really have a care in the world, you know, women are not in imminent danger, contrary to popular belief. Of course, you know, the narrative is, the narrative is that women are always looking over their shoulder because a big bad man is going to jump out of the bushes and do something bad to her. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You got girls walking. Guys, I've been in downtown Miami at two and three o'clock in the morning after doing fresh and fit after hours. Dude, there are girls dressed in next to nothing walking all around the city all the time. So these girls are safe. But the one thing, the one thing that I have always maintained is that women need to be protected from themselves. When a woman does not have a man in her life, whether that be a boyfriend, husband, father, she is self-destructive. Okay. And guys, this is a tale as this is a concept as old as time itself. Women have always been self-destructive, right? Religions understood understood this very, very, very clearly. This is why this is why certain religions have certain things in place because they understand that the damage a woman could do to society and herself. Women are on, women are self-destructive by nature. They are on autopilot with self-destructive destructiveness. If there's not a man in her life, if there's not a man in her life, she engages in self-destructive activity, sex, drugs, vehicular homicide, and the like. Now, ladies and gentlemen, anytime you hear rhetoric of that man saying when a woman is let to own the device, she tends to self-destruct, she tends to gain weight, um, she tends to implode, she tends to have multiple kids by multiple men, any type of any type when you hear this type of level of rhetoric and you're seeing like all these crazy pseudo statistics saying like men age rate we will do well with fine wine we think very rationally and then you see the stuff when women are looking on the vices versus when men are looking on the vices you know they self-destruct while men actually do pretty well in reality that's not always the case now some women if they're left to the own devices you know if they're either naive or unaware or they're actually still being very delusional and ignorant. Yes, they can self-destruct, you know, when they make dumb decisions for themselves and they forget they have someone to do this and they feel like they're untouchable and they're too arrogant, they could have the tendency to literally self-destruct. We're not actually going dis to dis disagree with them or actually defer with them from there. And there are some women that actually have matured enough that actually sought for healing and sought, sought for psychological intervention that they're able to literally pick themselves up on their feet and they literally actually handle themselves just fine, just like normal adults, whenever they are left to their own devices. I've seen someone like that of my family, and I've witnessed some women that I've worked around with that are actually well self-sufficient and well mature when they are left to their own devices as well. Yes, have they made some mistakes that are up in the past? Definitely did, but some of them have definitely learned from it. Now, there's some that haven't even like had that type of experience, and they basically wisened up beyond their years and they basically mature at times beyond their years and they know how to handle themselves in a mature way and they tend to actually lead their role by example actually being like normal adults and actually handling their own stuff handling responsibility which is what a normal adults do any rational adult that is actually very mature and actually decent can actually handle themselves when they look to their own devices whether it's a man or a woman and also make also make another factor there are some men when left to on the vices, whenever they're unhealed and whenever they're unhealed in trauma and whenever, they, whenever they're very delusional, that they can self-destruct as well if they're not careful, if they don't even put that stuff within heal, if they don't seek an adventure to try to help improve their life on all fronts, they could be on the path to self-destruction as well. I've seen that happen. I've seen that happen when in close friends myself. I've seen it happen when I was in college as well. And I personally do have family that are actually very well off and are very successful when they are left to their own devices also. Um, on my female side of the family, 
I have some very, very smart, intelligent people. Um, my mom actually did very well for herself as a law, um, yeah, Ivy League graduate at a law school, um, doing very, very, very well for herself being a managing general partner at a huge, huge firm. My younger sister, who's actually very, very smart in her own right as well, and she could be on the path, she may be on the path to being a paralegal, we don't know, but she is actually very, very intelligent in her own wife, in her, in her own life, in her own right, and she literally can actually handle herself as an adult literally just fine. You know, if like a woman actually wants to actually have babies, you know, when they're young and get young and married, there's nothing wrong with that. If she wants to actually stay at home and be a stay-at-home mom, there's nothing wrong with that. If she chooses to do so, if she actually wants to work and actually try to feed and actually choose to do the whole marriage thing, have kids and focus on the career, that's also right as well. As long as freedom of choice is ex mainly so in prayer, just as a man has freedom of choice to do whatever he wants to do, you know, so does a woman too. There are some people when they're left to their devices, they can actually do extremely well and can handle the pressure. And there are other people, men and women, that can self-destruct because either they are naive and actually handle a situation like that, they're delusional, they're ignorant, they're immature, or they're just demonic. You know, that's real. That's a real neck of the game, and that's a real interesting situation when it comes to it. It's all based on trial and error, and all depends on the mentality of that particular person. There's some, there's some real stuff right there. The reason why a lot of these pseudo red pill gurus <laughs> mainly say this type of stuff whenever a woman let the vice they become self destructive because a lot of them when they actually claim that they're definitely self destructive in their own right. They have some still traumas and anxieties and depressions that they've yet to heal or choose not to heal. Um, they've yet to actually deal with psychological invasion, dealing with the personal issues that they've yet to overcome in their lives. Some of which have criminal records within their names, some of which are professional convicted felons when they own names or have been convicted of misdemeanor crimes. The charges against the person and the factual basis for those charges. And as we see, the official charge for this case was obtaining property for worthless check, which is a first degree misdemeanor. The document goes on to say that Edwin Alexander Hopkins Jr. did obtain services, goods, wares, or other things of value from that certain business entity known as Publix, there delivering to Chris Wilk a certain worthless order for money, commonly called a bank check. Five years later, when Donovan Sharp was again arrested for writing a bad check, this time in Raleigh, North Carolina. And as we see from the court records, Edwin Alexander Hopkins Jr. wrote a worthless check to Posture Craft Mattress for $1,915.30 on June 25, 2009. Now after Donovan Sharp was notified that the check had bounced and then failed to pay what was owed in a timely fashion, legal charges were filed against him on December 4, 2009 and subsequently, an arrest warrant was issued, which led to his arrest by the Raleigh Police Department on February 7th. Juicy! Um, that they have one in their criminal record and they try to look for the next possible thing they can do just to try to use up you, the viewer. It's actually buying into the coach and actually soaking up into their ideology using a lot of the dark psychology tactics just to keep you in line. You know what I mean? They're, they're definitely red pseudo red pill groups that do this but they don't haven't really experienced enough trial and error to become hardcore experts when it comes to game and when it comes to day and everything else you know is it, this is the part we have to actually really try to vet these people mainly thoroughly and actually do a very very thorough background as to who these folks are whenever they actually spew this type of rhetoric out like this and what have they done have they been in successful relationships have they been in successful matches before you know what I'm saying? Had they been in successful relationships before where things actually work out or it hasn't been self-sabotaged, either through divorce. And it could be a combination where it's like his part or her part, we don't know. But as long as you actually try to make sure you vet that guru thoroughly down to the TDC, whether or not he is legitimate or she is legitimate down to the core. And she actually practices how she preaches or she actually lived that experience that she's been explaining about so that people can actually learn from those mistakes. You know what I'm saying? And when you peel the layers and you see a lot, a lot of these pseudo gurus basically are exposed to being actually hypocritical 
and not being the people that they actually claim to be, this really makes their claims really null and valid. And all this with all the spewing stuff that they mainly spewing, they could be spewing like a lot of misogynistic stuff that's really going down to probably deduce like some internal hatred based on past traumas they experienced but were in the past that they have yet to overcome. So that's why you see all this crazy rhetoric mainly go down to the T. And there are some hardcore feminists that are saying, hey, when men are left to your own devices, men are garbage, they sell themselves to something and everything else. They're going to be following the same path path that these pseudo red pill gurus in the manosphere have mainly done due to the fact that they have unhealed trauma within themselves as well. That's why seeing all that breath mainly come down the pipe. Now I want to lay all of this back to the Fresh and Fit podcast. Now, ladies and gentlemen, um, have you noticed the type of women that Fresh and Fit mainly put on the show virtually every single night? Throughout the podcast, ever since INA Gordon was out, um, you've noticed that like a lot of women that Myron, um, Chris have picked, and all these other like third party vendors that they have, these women mainly picked to actually come on their show. You notice that a lot of them are literally, literally out of shape. A lot of them are literally like hardcore OnlyFans models, um, hardcore IG thoughts, you know. And some of them, you know, they do have an educational background. And they do have advanced education, some of which have bachelor's degrees, some of which have master's degrees, some of which do have PhD degrees as well. You know, I'm not going to take their successes or anything, endeavors or anything away from them. And some of them do have professional jobs also in regards to that. But you notice with the variety and like the majority of the women that they mainly pick, a lot of them are literally hardcore whores. You know, a lot of them are literally like low down, low grade women that you mainly see that don't really thoroughly have much self-worth that can literally challenge fresh and friendly rhetoric or they're mainly naive and like to what type of stuff they're about to bring out and the ones that actually mainly do challenge them on an analytical and a local level when it comes to the critical thinking skills and a lot of cases Myron Gaines mainly freak castles them actually kicks the woman out kicks the woman um, out of his apartment and I've seen that many many times before this is they stick you know rile the woman up so they can try and get another kick out moment just for viral views but we are still literally in real time. Actually, no, I'm going a little bit too far. And also, one more thing that I forgot to mention in between that. Those call vendors that Fresh and Fit mainly have, they never do any background checks on these women to see if they have a criminal record. Um, they never have done any background checks to see if they're actually just having calm or if they have any behavioral disorders. They never really check their background checks to see if they have any MPDs, narcissist disorder, push pull disorders, learning disabilities to see what the mindset of that woman is. They haven't done any thorough vetting in regards to that. And I've never seen them do it. I, I, don't know, I don't know why. They definitely should do it. But the reason why they choose not to because they felt that it would be much more of an expense to do. Number one, they would have to actually pay to have a background check done. Number two, they have to have like it would be like a long process, which could take a week to see who that person really is. But because they want to mainly focus more on volume and everything else, they mainly would bypass it. It would literally come a lot of time. And in their minds, it would literally kill their quality of so based on the variety of the views and the variety of the Frank Castle. That's why they allow all that chaos. That's why Myron, Fresh and Chris, Big Mo, Blitz, um, or Bills, I forgot his name, where the fuck is Bills, they want that ratchet to keep it going on within those ratchet females that mainly come up on that show. They never do any background checks with them because they want to have like a high, high ass, high level ratchetivity Jerry Springer, Jerry, Jerry Springer experience. Which is why they never do those back check checks with a woman in the first place. And we've seen videos and clips of women literally going gung-ho. There's a clip with DJ Academics in which you see a woman literally pull a gun out of her purse. Literally looking to actually try to start something with DJ Academics years ago. Go shawty. You gotta go. You gotta go. Go handle your business. You're a last shit. You gotta go. You gotta go. Go handle your business. 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 Go handle your business.
This ain't Christ-like. This ain't Christ-like. This ain't Christ-like. This ain't Christ-like. Your show, you had up exposure on the God of your business. Where? 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 <laughs> you set your life. You ain't Christ like. That's Yo, why you need you to breathe. Christ -like. You need to breathe you during these the sessions. You cannot handle the truth. Yo, get it. Hey, Shorty, I hey, hey, listen. Hey, I go. Yo, I gonna play with y'all. I ain't gonna play with y'all. The moment she said that God was inspiring a thought, I couldn't do it. I'm gonna chill. She said that God was inspiring a thought. Yo, Shorty, get your bitch ass on out of here, Shorty. Get the fuck on out of here. Hi, I'm gonna start me a podcast soon. It's gonna be called The Lonely Yo, Show. Come on out of here, and come follow me at Kelly.co for my birthday. It's coming up soon. <laughs> I don't know, I'll probably take it off the bench. She's still trying to rebel! Y'all know that. Nigga, collide. Watch out my way. Real Nigga, we in Florida. Do not do that. Yes, sir. Like, I don't know what shorty was reaching for in her back with a spark of dumbass in here and got a pack off her. Fuck that. I've watched that video. And that has been literally insane. They feared to actually just like vet these women. They failed to actually check for weapons within their purses and bags. You know, they failed to check the background text and like how to see like how loose they are and like how Lily, uh, Lily and stand up in the brain they mainly are when it comes to their emotions, irrespective of like degrees and everything else. You know what I mean? You won't even have you won't even have like the time. Women take the time to actually do thorough background checks to see if you have a criminal record or not. This is why the Fresh and Fish show is n is literally illegitimate down to the T because they do not show any any um self centered or high level self worth women that's highly intelligent that's very that's very well in critical thinking skills as well as very successful in their own right when it comes to business or a job there is they don't even bring these said uh, really high level intelligent women mainly on their show because they actually challenge them on their points because they know like you know most of their stuff and most of the stuff that Marlon um mainly points out with the red they spews out every single day is mainly repetitive and whenever an intelligent woman mainly sees that, it actually sniffs that out. She will literally dissect it down to the T with actual evidence, anecdotal evidence down to the core, as well as personal experience. That's why the Fresh and Fit crew don't even pick these types of women there. But they'll definitely pick the naive women. You know, they'll definitely put the low grade women, like the OnlyFans stocks, the OnlyFans 304s. They'll pick them, the Instagram 304s they mainly have, you know. Not the modest chick that's mainly submissive, you know, that's actually just like been very pure and actually been very protective of her body. They don't even bring those types of women up onto their shows. They don't even bring, you know, those types of women that are actually very, very pure when they buy and they don't even strip. They don't even bring those types of women on. But yet these are the same women like on like telling you like avoid hoes, avoid 304s, you know, avoid OnlyFans thoughts, avoid Instagram thoughts. But yet they literally bring them up on their sets, you know. Avoid you know women that have that are basically have screws this and everything else, but yet you bring women that have these types of screws that and mainly come about. And what you see here is woman to woman who literally just got charged on a potential DUI, definitely vehicle and manslaughter, definitely vehicle and homicide. And if the text toxicology reports come back sometime within a couple weeks, they can literally add more of those DUI charges really down to to T where she could literally be serving decades up in jail you know what i mean and yet they failed to actually do a background check on women like her this is the mentality of the fresh and fit podcast ladies and gentlemen and this is what happens whenever you fans are actually having these types of women up in your lives 
while not actually, actually doing critical thinking skills and you not thinking for yourself. You really get soaked into the cult, you get really soaked into the dark psychological methods as a result of that. And you wonder why Fresh and Fair is really up in the chaos that they're literally in right now and more and more people are literally dipping away from the hardcore pseudo alpha guru nonsense that Fresh and Fit and many other, you know, overall master creators or pseudo master creators are mainly pulling out that are literally up in the red pill. The general public, especially, you know, average men, more and more average men are mainly losing respect, losing respect for them every single day. And I enjoy this shit, ladies and gentlemen. So my advice to you, what we can learn from this whole situation, is definitely number one thing for yourself. And it's not just women that can actually just actually learn from this matter, but also men too. Men, please, please, please always think for your future. Think about your future. If you got something to lose, make sure you actually be as disciplined and as professional as you possibly can. You know, please don't make the same mistake that this woman has made, you know, gone reckless while driving while high, while not following traffic signs and intersection causing chaos, leading women people. And please don't ever, ever drive with a suspended license. If your license is legit and good to go, you should be fine. But if you, you drive with a suspended license, you literally, you literally could be in a world of hurt. And I'm just going to leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. But it's critical how chaos of it all, man. Chris and Paul from the Nerd Chronicles is signing out. Deuces. Juicy!